What role did the first ram have in the consecration of Aaron and his sons as priests? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of Exodus on walking through the Bible. The glory of his cross. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Exodus 29. We're going to be reading from verses 15 to 18. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Exodus 29, beginning at verse 15. You shall also take one ram, and Aaron and his sons shall put their hands on the head of the ram, and you shall kill the ram, and you shall take its blood and sprinkle it all around the altar. Then you shall cut the ram into pieces, wash its entrails and its legs, and put them with its pieces and with its head. And you shall burn the whole ram on the altar. It is a burnt offering to the Lord. It is a sweet aroma, an offering made by fire to the Lord. In this chapter, we still have Moses on Mount Sinai receiving instructions from God as, as to how to build the sanctuary and how to set up the priesthood. In chapters 25 through 27, we had the building of the sanctuary. We had instructions on how to make the Ark of the Covenant and the Mercy Seat, how to build the showbread table, how to build the golden lampstand and the altar of burnt offering, and where they would be placed in the sanctuary. We also had the instructions for how to build the tabernacle itself, including the holy place and the most holy place, as well as the court of the tabernacle. In chapter 28, we had the instructions for the priestly garments. There was a difference between the high priest garments and the common priest garments. However, both were special garments that would sanctify them from among the people. Coming to the first 37 verses of this chapter then, we have God's instructions for consecrating Aaron and his sons as priests. We have already discussed how they were to bring one bull, one young bull, and two rams without blemish, along with unleavened bread, unleavened cakes mixed with oil, and unleavened wafers anointed with oil. Aaron and his sons were then to be washed, after which Aaron would be clothed in the high priest's garments and anointed with oil as high priest. Aaron's sons were then to be clothed in their garments and be consecrated as priests as well. They were then to receive their sashes and Aaron's sons their hats and become the priests of the Lord, a priesthood that was to remain in their family for as long as the law of Moses stood. Following this, Aaron and his sons were to collectively sacrifice a bull as a sin offering to the Lord. Specific instructions for killing the bull, what to do with its blood, and what to burn on the altar, and how and where to burn the rest of the bull, was given in verses 10 to 14. Which brings us to verse 15. Back in verse 1, they were told to bring two rams to the consecration ceremony. The use for one of these rams will be discussed in today's episode. Like the bull that was sacrificed as a sin offering, when the ram is brought, Aaron and his sons were to place their hands on the head of the ram, and Moses was to kill it. However, what is done afterwards is a little different than that of the sin sacrifice. If you recall, some of the blood of the bull was to be placed on the horns of the altar, with the rest poured beside the base of the altar. For this sacrifice, the blood of the ram was to be entirely sprinkled around the altar. The altar, again, that is spoken of here is the altar of burnt offering, discussed back in chapter 27. For the sin sacrifice of the bull, only the fat of the entrails, as well as the fatty lobe of the liver and the two kidneys with their fat, was to be burned on the altar. For this sacrifice, the whole ram would be burned on the altar. Now, before the ram was burned, it was to be prepared, as simply burning a whole ram unprepared on the altar would take too much time. The ram was to be cut into pieces. Its entrails and its legs were then to be washed and then placed with the rest of the pieces and the head of the ram. Then and only then could it be burned on the altar. This would be known as a burnt offering. Burnt offerings have been offered to the Lord since way back in Genesis chapter 4. They are usually seen as a voluntary sacrifice, though they are commanded here. Hence why, when these sacrifices are offered, the Lord is pleased, for it shows man's kind's willingness to sacrifice of himself to the Lord that which the Lord has provided for him. More will be discussed about this type of sacrifice when we get to Leviticus chapter 1. Once the sacrifice is offered in the way God desired, it is said that the offering presents itself a sweet aroma to the Lord. Does this mean that God is physically smelling the sacrifice and likes the smell of burnt ram? No, what is meant here is that when the sacrifice, like we said earlier, is offered the way the Lord wants it, the Lord is pleased. That the Lord can be pleased when we obey him should provide us comfort that the Lord is not asking of us some impossible task. He asks for complete obedience, yes, but when we do that, he will be pleased. We will continue with the ceremony, the Lord willing, in the next episode. 
With that, our time is up for today, Lord willing. We hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Exodus chapter 29, verses 19 to 25, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.